Good evening. Thanks for always staying with Lagos Television. You're watching Sound Health. I am Ola Sumbo Mudupe. Today on the program, we are taking a look at the Marburg virus. Health authorities in Ghana reported cases of the virus in the Ashanti region. Today, we are taking a look at how to prevent the further spread of this virus to other parts of the world. Stay tuned. The conversation begins after this break. <music> We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. I have made a set of recommendations for four groups of countries. First, those that have not yet reported a case of monkeypox or have not reported a case for more than 21 days. Second, those with recently imported cases of monkeypox and that are experiencing human-to-human -human transmission. This includes recommendations to implement a coordinated response to stop transmission and protect vulnerable groups. health on Lagos Television. Joining us via Zoom this evening is Dr. Ladiko Okola Wole, um, the Ed Department Microbiology at Deleke University and founder Elix Baojin Institute, um, one of the institutes that developed COVID-19 vaccine candidate that has been captured by the World Health Organization, making it second in Africa. Thank you so much for always obliging us, Dr. Okola Wole. Yeah. Thank you for having me on this program this evening. It's a pleasure. It's part of our community service. All right. Um, COVID-19, monkeypox, and now Marburg virus. What do these um, virus uh, have in common? Well, uh, I can just say that we have something called a uh, reimagined infectious disease. Not that they have not been existing before, they have been, but they are trying to re-emerge. So coming back again from what we have known them to be. And none of these virus we are talking now that we've not talked about them in the past. So that is why we call them, you know, we have the this classified or categorized into two. We have imagine and re-imagine. So they want emerged but now they are still surfacing back again. So those are the classes which are to all these uh, viruses are. And one thing that is common to all of them, are part of positive agents, we have bacteria, we have parasites, we have fungi. All of them are viruses. All right, Dr. Kulawole, thanks for that explanation. Some countries reported the virus last year. Just last week, Ghana reported few cases of the virus. Um, what is it you know about the Marburg virus now? Yeah, I think a uh, few things that we know about Marburg virus because uh, one thing about all these uh, organisms is that we keep learning and knowing some things about them. So Marburg virus is a positive agent of a Marburg virus disease and uh, the fatality of the disease is up to 88%. And uh, it, it was initially found uh, in uh, Germany in 1967. You know, that's why I said earlier on that this virus is a re You see, 1967, that has been some years yeah. back, the virus was detected. And um, uh, Marburg and Ebola are both members of the family Philobiridae. So they are filoviruses, uh, though there are a little bit of uh, differences in them. And uh, this uh, virus uh, is that they classify as uh, zoonotic uh, diseases. These are diseases or infections that we got in, uh, from uh, animal. So that is that is one thing that's still common to all of them. They are zoonotic uh, infections. They are infections that uh, through the activities of human beings with animals. So those, those diseases became what is being experienced in human uh, population. All right, um, Dr. Kolawali, are the infection um, path similar with um, COVID-19, um, Ebola, as well as uh, monkeypox? 
No, 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 no. The instruction pattern is not similar. Uh, they have some similarities and they have some differences because their mode of transmission is quite different. Uh, when a uh, monkey post is there now, uh, we're not talking about wearing of face masks because their route of transmission is quite uh, different. Uh, so, uh, Mabo and Ebola have some similarities in their uh, route of transmission. Do one common route of transmission that is common to all of them is person to person. It means if I have a contact with a suspected individual or individual that is a confirmed positive uh, to that uh, infection and I'm not protected, there is likelihood of me uh, being infected once I get exposed to such an uh, infection. So that is one thing that is common. It can be transferred from one person to another. So it means if preventive measure is not put in place, uh, community transmission is possible. All right, let's look at the incubation period. Um, for COVID-19, it takes about two weeks when, uh, before symptoms manifest. What about uh, Ma the Marburg virus now? Are the incubation period uh, the same? I think incubation period varies. Some researchers say within two to nine days. Some uh, report between two to 21 days. So you can, you can see that uh, the incubation period, uh, it's there. The, the only thing is that during the incubation period, uh, the virus cannot be transmitted, but once the incubation period is completed, and uh, we have another viral titer that is also called a uh, viremia, so there is possibility that the virus can be transmitted because uh, it can be seen in tissues, uh, in fluids, in blood. So once someone gets in contact with uh, such uh, uh, samples from infected animals or individuals, it's that's likely to have been, uh, been infected. And you can see that this is very common among the earth workers because they are the first contacts that they have with the, with the patient. So, uh, and uh, with knowledge of all this, it's easier to prevent such an uh, infection. Knowledge of all this is easier to prevent such an uh, infection. All right, can we be more specific now? Let's look at the symptoms. What are the symptoms um, members of the public must look out for when it comes to Marburg virus? Actually, the symptoms is very difficult. The reason why I said it's very difficult is that uh, we have some other diseases, some other ailments that they share the same symptoms in common. But let's talk about those symptoms that are so common with the uh, Marburg virus. We have a uh, uh, high fever, that is a uh, abnormal high in body temperature. And we have what we call a severe headache, and uh, we have severe mileage, we have muscle aches, uh, pains in common features, we have uh, myhygia. So these are, these are the common uh, symptoms that uh, is found in, uh, in, in patients. And uh, some patients can develop what we call uh, hemorrhagic, that is uh, that will occur within uh, five, to seven days, and uh, which means uh, bleeding in multiple areas. And we have what we call uh, fresh blood in in, uh, in vomitors. It means when the person vomits, you can see blood. And uh, we have uh, we have blood in feces. Uh, we have bleedings from the nose, from the feces, uh, from the gum, from the vagina. So those are the the, the classified stage of Maboga. And that is why if uh, someone is not knowledgeable, he will really want to assist somebody that the blood is coming out from the nose or from mm. the gum, whereby if the person is not protected wearing glove, it is easier to contract the virus if he or she has an opening in the zone body too. So it's going to serve as a source of inoculation into the body. So these are those symptoms that we see. So the best way to validate this symptom is by carrying out a test. And that is why when we experience any symptom, we, can, we cannot just start using any drug. The mm -hmm. best thing for us to go is to go to the nearest primary health care center or the, primary, the, uh, the nearest hospital, I, a certified uh, uh, hospital to go to and proper tests will be done. From there, they will know exactly what is wrong with us and the doctor they will be to prescribe the appropriate drug for such a 
condition. All right, last week, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control issued a public health advisory regarding the Marburg virus. What are the measures we must uh, put in place or are there to, to prevent the further spread in Nigeria? Now, like, like what you are doing now is one of the measures. Uh, we have to do more community uh, sensitization. Uh, that, that means that uh, by the time we try to tell the community the mode of transmission, how to prevent it, it makes the community to be aware by creating more awareness, educating our people more about what this virus really entails, like what we are doing. So that is one way that we can actually do that. Then we should put our uh, borders on surveillance. And I, I, I know I'm very sure about that, is that whenever you take a flight, international flight, they ask you of your symptoms, if you are expressing some symptoms. And I know too that if you are coming into Nigeria now, for you to come in, there are some forms you are going to fill by SBC that they put in place to ask if you have a witness fever, you have taken uh, some, uh, some analgesics in the past few weeks or things like that. The, the only problem, I have about that is that how to do uh, people feeling all those things. Though we put a system in place, uh, what are the things we are actually going to check that the information we are getting from individual is also very correct. And I know that during time of Ebola, there is this uh, Tama uh, te uh, temperature checking machine that you have at the airport that once a passenger is coming, they can scan you and know your temperature. So all those things, we have it already. So we just have to put in more effort in implementing and the usage of those equipment to allow us to know whenever this virus wants to enter into Nigeria. What about genomic sequencing? We know um, there are uh, measures in place already for genomic sequencing as a result of COVID-19 before now. How have we been able to utilize this? Is there um, a continuity in place? Yeah, th th there's always been a continuity in place in anything. I think, you know, the only challenge we have now is that uh, the capacity is still very low compared to, 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 to others because uh, we, we, we do that based on people that are traveling out. I told people the other time, when you see high rates of uh, COVID-19, that was detected some weeks ago. And uh, we were thinking that it's as a result of people going to Hajj because it's part of the criteria for them to do. But adventure, if people are not traveling out and mass that period, we may not know that the virus is still very, very uh, is circulating in our population. So we can use the genomics, but it's, it's not easy, like people say, because of the cost implication that it comes for you to sequence a sample and look at our population, look at how many tests. So they cannot be sequencing all the sample that is coming in, but there are ways to do the selection in order to know what and what to do. So we need to build more capacity in terms of our genomic sequencing in the country to have more centers. And this is something that the state government can also do without us waiting for the uh, right. federal government or international uh, do not to support us in that, you know. But for now, the ones we have uh, for private individual like that of uh, Duma University, we have uh, that of NIMA, it's government, NCBC, uh, Institute of Virology like that, that is still government. So we, we, we need the state government to, to have that facility in order to support the government. So it allows us to fight as many diseases we want to fight and have the full information from it. What has been said about measures? What about cure? Is there a cure for the Marburg virus? Are there vaccines in place uh, pres against this presently, virus? Presently, there is no vaccine for Marburg virus. And uh, personally, I'm also working on it. We have our team working on messenger RNA vaccine for Marburg virus to see how far we can go on that. But and there is no specific treatment uh, because uh, what has been done so far is what we call a supportive care, which means a rehydration with aura or intravenous food, fluid rather, and treatment of specific symptoms uh, to improve survival. 
for, for instance, when I talked about headache, you know how to take care of headache when the patient is complaining about uh, stomach ache or head, uh, uh, muscle pain, you need to control that. When you see that your patient is using electrolytes, you have to supplement. So the treatment that we have now is supportive. So as, as, as the patient is showing clinical signs, that will inform the type of treatment to give uh, that patient. Uh, when somebody is uh, being hemorrhagic, the next treatment to be done appropriately will be administered to such a patient. So that is the way uh, Marburg virus disease is being uh, treated and taken care of. All right, Dr. Kolawole, your call to action now. This was how the uh, monkeypox virus started before the World Health Organization issued, uh, um, labeled it as um, a public health emergency disease. Your call to action to governments, to international governments, international communities, as well as public health officials. Well, my call is that they should see Africans as of more importance. You, you can see that we've been experiencing monkeypox uh, in Africans, and WHO will never declare it as an emergency. Uh, we have seen Lhasa in our community. WHO has never declared it emergency. Though uh, they have their reason of doing that, but I think uh, we should come together as a team and work to fight this. And our own government also, both at all level, all tiers, at, at African Union and any other place like that, to see to the problem of Africans in terms of health and see how we can fight it. Since the time, uh, monkeypox have started ravaging Europe and things like that. And that is why you see attention is being drawn to it more than before. And we have experienced it. We have fought it. Our scientists uh, still have some way of managing it. So uh, I, I want that we should approach health issue from holistic point of view, so that all of us can be working and be on the same pedestal, on the same platform. Holistic and collective approach is the way to go. Dr. Kolawole, thank you so much for your time and expertise on the program, always. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having us. It's part of our responsibility to educate our community. All right, I have been speaking with Dr. Oladik Bokola, Head Department, Microbiology, Adelike University, and founder Elix Biogen Institute on Marburg virus, how to curtail the further spread to other countries. Up next is trending health reports. Please stay tuned. <music> Thank you. 
It is still Sound Health on Lagos Television. More to come in a moment. Declining attention to COVID-19 doesn't mean the pandemic is over. Protect yourself and your loved ones. Take responsibility against COVID-19 and other diseases. This is why we say thank you on today's episode of Sound Health. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 35 or follow us on social media at LCD Social. Hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make health the living your choice.